Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Jordan and today I'm here to give you some book recommendations from some of my favorite books by black queer authors. And I say black and emphasize black um, because it is Pride Month, but I want to highlight the most oppressed, which are black queer um, people within the LGBTQ community, but also within the black community. Um, we wouldn't even have Black Lives Matter if it wasn't for um, a queer black person. So I would be remiss to not celebrate pride and to um, highlight those voices that highlight my voice all the time. Until the most oppressed are not oppressed, none of us are free. Um, so I would just be remiss to not. And pride, you wouldn't have pride without queer black people. So how can you celebrate pride and not celebrate black people, queer black people? Um, so that's why I'm having this video. And before I even get into my book recommendations, because I want to highlight my fellow black queer booktubers. So I'm gonna tell you guys two of my favorite channels. I'm highlighting these two specifically because sometimes when there's a long list, people don't really check out all of them. And I really want to make sure that before y'all even watch my video that y'all check these um, booktubers out because they're just amazing and I just love what they do and I wanna shine light on them. And the first one is Capri's Book Island. Uh, if you like this channel, you're gonna love, you're gonna love um, Capri's Book Island. Um, I think I first found out about her via, maybe it was her commenting. I don't know what it was, but I just saw that she was into cosplay and I think I just started following her. But also on Twitter, like I, 90% of the stuff I retweet are her tweets. And anytime I'm like, oh my gosh, that was funny. I'm about to retweet it. I'm like, oh. It's from her. <laughs> so anyways, check out, I'm not just talking about Twitter, check out her actual YouTube, watch the videos, don't just blindly subscribe, watch the videos, subscribe and all that. Um, and the next person is Luxurious Blue, which Luxurious Blue, a light, like they are just a light. Like I actually met Luxurious Blue in person at Booknet Fest. They were a light then, their channel is a reflective of that. Um, Any time I watch one of their videos, like, I leave with a smile on my face and that's just um that's just that but now let's get into my recs for pride all of these authors are black and queer with the exception of one one of them is a black person i'm putting it at the end of the list because of that reason um which i'll get into more in depth as to why i included that book on this list <sighs> without further ado let's go parable of the sower y'all i can't even like i read parable of the talents Parable of the Talents was amazing. It was so well done, so amazing. Parable of the Sower, revolutionary. Like, I can't even. So Parable of the Sower is like, almost like a dystopian. It is <laughs> so prevalent to what's going on right now. It's scary, like it's really scary. I also read Parable of the Talents and both of them, it literally will give you goosebumps if you read it right now. Like it's basically right now. It's basically should have been called 2020. Next up, you guys know I raved about this like crazy. This is the stars and the blackness between them. If you have not read this, it's by Janata Petrus. Read this. Beautiful black girls that are just written so beautifully and perfect. I, I can't even. Um, one of the characters is from Trinidad, um, Audrey, and she's actually sent away to live in America after is discovered that she has a girlfriend and Mabel who's in America, she has her own struggles, but it's really just a beautiful story about being beautifully black and beautifully queer and supporting each other. And it's just, it's, it's just refreshing and such a great story. There were tears, but I will say that this, I, I, it's hard to not smile when I talk about this book or think about this book. Definitely read this if you haven't. The next book that I'm talking about is Don't Call Us Dead by Denez Smith, which the author, they are freaking amazing. I know you're tired of me talking about this book, but I don't care, I'm gonna keep talking about it every single time. Any chance I get, I gave y'all a break, honestly. But this is a collection of poetry, and for me to purchase, y'all know, for me to purchase a book is a lot. So this says a lot, right? That I have and own the physical copy, and it's like the cover itself is just beautiful, but that's not even the point. The poetry, the way the poems are written, they're written beautifully. And on top of that, it just, this touches on the beauty of being black. Um, the author themselves is HIV positive and talks about some of those concepts within the book. This 
this is just amazing. Like you just had to read it to really get why it's amazing, but it's black as F and it's beautiful as F. And it really touches to your soul. Like that's the best way I could say it. Um, you know, I most recently um, picked up Homie. I will say Homie's the most recent one, but this, this is the, this is the, the money maker. Get this. The next book I'm talking about is An Un Unkindness of Ghosts by Rivers Solomon. This is another book that I also gushed about. I love this freaking book. I will say it's science fiction and it's based on <laughs> so many different things. It's like hard to even categorize this book. It was brilliantly done. So the author, they did such a great job of capturing science fiction, but capturing so many things that are prevalent because Aster, the main character, is a lower decker, uh, which basically is a caste system in space, which is gonna sound crazy when you hear it, but trust me, it's a good book. Um, and it's based on the darker you are, the lower deck you are. It touches on so many different things um, from science, from surgeries, from um, medicines, from um, freaking, um, the main character themselves is androgynous. The, love interest is just so unique there's so many different layers within this freaking book it's not even funny when i first started the book at first i was like huh it takes you a minute to get into it but once you get into it i'm telling y'all do not let the first 40 something pages deter you because once you're set up in it you're going to love it especially if you love science fiction if you love science fiction you have to read that book like that's it you just have to a book that i read most recently um patsy I freaking love that book. Like, I just love that book. It's by Nicole Dennis Ben. And I'm so thankful for having reading it during the time I did because it got me back into reading. But it follows Patsy, who is Jamaican and has a daughter and is coming to America and leaving her daughter behind. Um, but she's coming to America for various different reasons. And one of them being is that she is in love with the woman and she cannot be herself there. It also follows her daughter, True, who also um, explores sexuality as well as her gender identity within the story. And honestly, the book is about so much. Um, there's a lot of triggers in there. Like it talks about a lot. If you watch my standalone or even my wrap up, it, it touches on like self-harm, on physical abuse, um, sexual abuse, um, so many different triggers on there, homophobia and lots of different stuff. But the author does such a great job of making this everyday life, making this very um, descriptive within the characters where you really get a taste of each of the characters and it kind of feeds into a lineage of how they're navigating, like True's navigating her mother leaving, Patsy's navigating being in a different country. And you really see almost like also Patsy's mother, you get to understand that dynamic as well. And I just feel like it's a it's 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 a great read it's a great read <laughs> next up by akweke amezi is pet uh this was a young adult um novel which i actually feel was kind of like middle grade which i think i said in my review before um but honestly all ages i say this because i feel like all ages um would enjoy this book it is a story or a play on monsters it is a society that believes they got rid of all the monsters but of course they didn't so that's pretty much where this picks up off and it's just so beautifully done like i just i really appreciated the book i think it's a story that needs to be told the author themselves they are trans and non-binary and they reflect that within the story as well and i just think the author they are very creative in the way that they make the story literally come alive and that's what I'll say without giving away too much. Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson, which I loved. Now, Jacqueline Woodson, I just love her writing. Like, I love her writing. Her favorite of mine is actually Another Brooklyn. And um, I also love Brown Girl um, Dreaming. So, yeah, but her my favorite is Another Brooklyn. So, Red at the Bone is beautifully done. I love this book. I raved about it a lot last year, um, but essentially the way Jacqueline Wilson just makes you feel these characters is just amazing I connected with the characters so much like they become like you like you just be like 
all invested into them, you know? Um, and the story, I'm not even talking about the story. The story is really about three different generations and it's also about um, different class, you know, social classes and economic classes and kind of how this teen pregnancy shaped the lives of so many different individuals. But Jacqueline Winston is just so good at what she does. I just, I just, I just eat all her stories alive. Um, yeah, I, I just love it. I just love it. Honestly, just read anything James Baldwin. I, I just want to point, I can't have this list and not have James Baldwin on this list because James Baldwin just has impacted black lives so much, has impacted LGBTQ community so much, and has impacted America so much. And yeah, if you haven't read James Baldwin, read James Baldwin. I'm actually reading Giovanni's Room, um, which I've never read. Go figure, there's just so much out there for James Baldwin, but I'm so excited to read that. And that novel um, explores a young man who explores a relationship with a man and a woman. And I'm just intrigued because you hear so much about um, that book and hear so much about the movie and I'm just excited. Once Ghosted, Twice Shy, was a novella within the Reluctant Royals series and I just freaking love it so much. It features, if you um, read A Princess in Theory, it follows Lakotsi. You learn about a romance that Lakotsi had with somebody who ghosted her. Well, we, we get to find out and it's so crazy because when I was reading A Princess in Theory, I was like, man, I, I wish I, I really liked Lakotsi and I really wanted to know more. So when I heard that the novella was featuring her love story, I was like, I'm reading it. but. Her love interest is actually Fabiola, who's Haitian, crib. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let me stop. Um, who's Haitian American, and I just love that dynamic as well. And I just loved the freaking novella. Like, it's set in New York, you know, Fabiola is into, like, a businesswoman is creating her own art, her own jewelry, her own stuff. Very interesting characters and just very passionate, loving romance. <laughs> Alyssa Cole is just amazing at what she does as far as writing love stories and Once Goes to Twice Shy, one of my favorites in the entire Reluctant Royals series. So definitely check that out. So those are my recommendations for Black queer stories and authors. Um, please leave down below any recommendations that you have. I would love to have us share that back and forth so other people whether I've read the book or not, can share that. And um, just so you can have options out there and continue to share. Also directly below, I will link the channel to both Luxurious Blue as well as Caprice Island, Book Island. Um, and I'm not gonna put it in the description box. I'm gonna put it in the comment section and pin it because y'all don't be looking at the description box. And I really want y'all to check out their channels. Um, additionally, the books that I'm gonna be reading for Pride that I didn't already mention, you know, I said Giovanni's Room as well as um, Here Comes the Sun, but I'm also gonna be reading All Boys Aren't Blue. And if I have time, let's talk about love, um, which is a rom-com. So I'm excited about that if I get to it this month. Um, but yeah, let me know what y'all are reading. Love and light, and I guess I will see y'all in the next one. Deuces.